Mark chapter 12, beginning with verse 28 and reading through verse 34, will be our text for today. Mark chapter 12, verse 28. Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So the scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You have spoken the truth, for there is one God, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And now we come to the crux of it. Now when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And may God bless the reading and preaching of his word today. Several years ago, my son was taking me on a tour of the new city that he had just moved to. And as he's driving me around, he had the radio on. And a song came on entitled, How Far Is Heaven? I'd never heard it before, but I listened to it, and I, I commented to my son how I liked the song. I liked the words, the tone, the rhythm, the tune, all that good stuff. Blake grinned at me and said, Dad, do you know the name of the group that sings the song? I said, No. I have no idea, first time I'd ever heard it. He said, the group is called the Lost Lonely Boys. The Lost Lonely Boys. I said, well, Blake, I don't know how lost they are, and I don't know how lonely they are, but I still like their song. Now, let me tell you why I like their song. They started out singing about the prison they were in. And then they named the prison they were in. In the song they sing, they're locked up in this crazy world. That was the prison, this crazy world. And they sang how weary they are of this crazy world. And because of that, throughout the song, they kept singing over and over, Lord, can you tell me how far is heaven? I just got to know, Lord, how far is heaven? Well, I'm happy to report that yes, the Lord can and does know how far heaven is, and he can and does tell us just how far heaven is. That's what he does in verse 34. When he told this man, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Now, before we get to that, let's look at the events leading up to it. And first of all, we want to note the sneaky scribes that were involved. In the first part of this chapter, a group of religious leaders called the scribes come to Jesus and they ask him two questions. One question was about paying taxes to the government. And the second question was, who would they be married to when they got to heaven? Now, they only asked these questions to try and trick and trout Jesus, to try and catch and snare him. These scribes didn't give a rip about paying taxes, and they didn't give a rip about being married in heaven. All they wanted to do was to trout Jesus Christ. But as we know, they were wasting their time and their breath, for they or no one else is able to trick or trout Jesus Christ. Jesus, of course, knew what these snakes in the grass were up to, and he answered their questions as only he could, and then he also had some choice words for these guys and their sneaky, underhanded motives. But that's not the point of our message today. No, we want to look at now the sincere scribe. 
We meet him in verse 28. And we see, first of all, he was sincere in his approach to Jesus. After all of his buddies, the sneaky scribes left, scratching their heads with their tails tucked between their legs, look at what he did. One of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that Jesus had answered well. This one scribe had listened to their question and answer session, their give and take between Jesus and his buddies. And unlike his buddies, he was impressed with what Jesus had to say. He was moved and touched by the words of Jesus, so much so that he approached Jesus wanting to know more. And so this shows us right here that this one scribe was sincere, honest and genuine in his approach of Jesus. Well, his approach to Jesus then led to his sincere asking of Jesus. Look at his question in verse 28. Which is the first commandment of all? Now that's a good question. Unlike those two silly questions his scheming buddies ask of Jesus, this question is serious, sincere, and significant. This question is meaningful, important, and beneficial. His question wasn't a trick question, a gotcha question. No, no. It was real, it was honest, it was sincere, it was straight from this man's heart and head. He asked this question of Jesus out of his legitimate care and concern. He really and truly wanted to know what was the first commandment of all. And then we see his sincere agreement with Jesus. In verses 29 through 31, Jesus gave him not just the first commandment of all, he gave him the first and second commandment of all. That's just like our Lord, isn't it? He always gives us more than we ask him for. And then following that, in verses 32 and 33, this man completely agrees with the answer Jesus gave. Now, the rest of those scribes, they didn't agree with Jesus about anything. Not even what day of the week it was. But this scribe did. He agreed with Jesus' answer as the two greatest commandments. For as he put it, well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth. And then we see that his assessment of Jesus was sincere. In the last part of verse 33, he assesses the answer of Jesus correctly when he states that to love God and our neighbor, the answer Jesus gave, is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. You see, he not only agreed with the answer of Jesus, he agreed with the priority of his answer. He agreed with why he gave the answer, the motivation for his answer, which was the love of God and the love of our fellow man. So from all of this, we see that this scribe was sincere. He wasn't playing games with Jesus. He wasn't acting. He was the real deal. And because he was sincere, Jesus gave him his famous statement in verse 34, the statement as to how far is heaven and how far was heaven from this man. Not far at all. That phrase Jesus uses there for not fall, that not far, that literally means right on the verge of, right on the edge of, right on the lip and tip of, right on the border of right on the brink and brim of. Now, do you realize what Jesus is saying here? Think about this. All that we've seen about this man so far has been right on target. His approach, his asking, his agreement, his assessment. And now Jesus says to this man, buddy, you are that far from heaven. Now, Picture the scene. Physically, how far do you think Jesus was from this man? He's talking to him in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. We don't know exactly, but he had to be close. 
I'm guessing he was kind of like me and Tim here. Jesus talking to this man. Maybe he was a little further back. Maybe from me and Michael and Jackie there, or Patty over here, or somebody back here. But he had to be close. They didn't have cell phones back then, okay? He had to be close to him. Do you get the picture? How do you get to heaven, folks? One way, through one man, Jesus Christ. And he's saying to that man, you are not far from heaven. You see what he's saying? I'm heaven. You get to heaven through me. Or you don't get to heaven. And you're that close. You're that close. That's what Jesus was saying to that man. You get that picture? You are that close. From me to him. Or maybe even closer. Now, did this sincere scribe take this step? We don't know. We'll know one day, but we don't know today. We like to think he did. We hope that he did. From his approach and everything, we sure like to think that he did. But as far as actually knowing, the Bible does not tell us. But the Lord doesn't make mistakes. If he placed his faith in that man who was talking to him, he's in heaven right now. And we'll meet him one day. If he didn't, he's in hell right now. The Lord doesn't make mistakes. But he was that close. That close. And you know what? Heaven is that far from you. That same distance. Because the only way you get to heaven is through that same man that was talking to that man. And Jesus is right here today talking to you. And he's telling you exactly what he told that man. Heaven is that far. How far you are from me, that's how far heaven is. That's how close heaven is. That's how near heaven is. Now my friend, you know that God loves you. You know that you're a sinner. You know that you cannot save yourself. Therefore, you know you need a Savior. And you know that Jesus Christ died on that cross in order to save you. And you know that Jesus is right here, right now, that close to you or closer. And he's telling you that's how far heaven is. That's how far heaven is. My friend, don't blow it. Don't back up. Don't back off. Don't back away. Don't back out. You're that close. You're back close. You're back close. That's how far heaven is. That's how far heaven is. You think about that.